Capaldi. Here is Movie Dreadwing, another character who only appears in the console game. The alt form is a jet, most likely a MiG of some kind. For those of you who don't know, MiGs are those Russian fighter jets. Like Movie Starscream, this mode is best viewed from the top, where it looks very convincing. More detailing such as panels and rivets are present, and the camouflage paint job is very appropriate for the jet, if a little dull. Unlike Movie Starscream, however, he actually has exhaust engines at the rear. The missiles also double as jet plumes and can be fired in this mode too. There is, however, some noticeable undercarriage junk, which is typical of a jet transformer. There's the upper arms, the elbow joints and the legs. To be fair, the leg configuration does resemble a sort of missile or sensor pod. If you think of it either way, it doesn't look too bad. They also have tiny wheels which the jet rolls on, in compensation for the lack of real landing gear. The transformation is actually pretty complex for a deluxe, and starts with the automorph. Basically, you split the body at the rear, and the rest opens up, revealing some chest and torso detailing. You may want to remove the missiles since they'll just fire out accidentally anyway. And that's him done. Dreadwing's robot mode is... not so great. Like Boba Fett, he suffers from what I call the half good, half bad syndrome. I say that because Dreadwing actually looks fairly cool from the torso up. Like movie Swindle, his head is basically an optic lens with no facial details. Though having the entire nose cone at the back of his head looks really weird in my opinion. More mole detailing is revealed, especially thanks to the chest automorph, and the panels which flip up from the wings add to the look of the mode. His lower arms are rather bulky since they're basically the jet's exhaust engines, though the thruster nozzles split to form claws, which is a nice touch. However, it's as if the designers got him mixed up with a scout class figure when it came to the waist and legs. They're stupidly tiny and eliminate whatever badass appearance this figure had going for it. Dreadwing's articulation is intentionally decent, but the head is limited by either of these panels, and he has no proper elbow movement. To point the missiles forward, you have to move the whole arm up, but this makes him top heavy and the small waist and legs don't help much. In conclusion, I believe that Dreadwing's design would have worked better at a Voyager scale, allowing for improved proportions and posability. He's not that bad a figure really, but there are plenty of movie toys I'd recommend over him, including the repaint, Overcast. Mace Windu is the next figure for reviewing, but until then, till all are one.